the church say amen. Amen. We thank you, choir. Let the church say amen. Amen. We want to acknowledge that that's Sister Ethel Jones in worship today. She's on our homebound members list, but she's in worship today. Who's that? Who, who's that with you today, Sister Ethel? Let the church say amen. Are there any other great grandparents in here today? Amen. And there's there. Amen. 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 We are glad to welcome you, great granddaughter. Tell us, tell us her first name. Well, hello, Dina. We are glad you're here. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, beloved, if we may, together, bowing our heads right where we are. Almighty and gracious God, God of our mothers and of our fathers and our God. Now send out your light and your truth. Let them lead us now so that the words which are spoken and the words which are heard may be the words of the truth of your gospel, dear Jesus, for the living of our days. For we pray in your precious name, dear Savior. I heard the church say, Amen. Amen. He was a man for whom his come to Jesus meeting worked. In one day, he gave up all the alcohol that he had been consuming in an excessive fashion. In one day, his his sadness and his depression lifted in one day because of his encounter with Jesus, his anger was put in check. And notice I didn't say to you this morning that his anger was eliminated. It was that, 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 that it didn't exist anymore. I said it was put in check. Amen. Before he got to his come to Jesus meeting, there was something this man was was doing and and on his way to to meeting Jesus he was already becoming a more grounded person somebody say i want to be a more grounded person shake shake your neighbor's hand and tell your neighbor i want to be a more grounded a more grounded person have you ever known somebody whose head was so high up in the clouds that they couldn't get their feet firmly planted on the ground? Have you ever loved somebody you knew needed help and you gave them all the help you could, but the more help that they needed and the more help you, you gave, the more you understood that the help that they needed was beyond your ability to help them with. And you tried your best, but you knew that, that at some point, they were going to have to help themselves, help himself, help herself. Amen. And, and, and what you wanted to encourage them to do was, was as they help themselves before they try anything else, try Jesus and, and, and stay with Jesus. Don't don't give him don't give him an overnight try. Give him a, a try where you're going to stay with him. Give him a try where you're going to listen to him. Give him a try where he's got a long term potential to change your life. There are two parts to the story of the movie Unbroken. The one produced by movie star Angelina Jolie. And I I just want you to put a pin in the two parts of of that movie, of that story, Unbroken. Amen. We'll come back to it. As we return to Ephesians, this annual meeting, business meeting Sunday, it's, it's, it's worthwhile, beloved, to consider Paul's great prayer to the Ephesians in this third chapter. See, that's what we're looking at. Pull out your pull out your insert today. You'll notice that 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 Ephesians passage today is a prayer. And today we want to consider what that prayer means for us and what that prayer might mean to us. Amen. Today, number one, we we want to acknowledge that that Paul that 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 Paul in this prayer prayed in such a way that his prayer literally grounded him. He was seeking union with the creator. So he began in verse 14 with this powerful line. My response is to what? Get down on my knees before the father. 
this magnificent father who parcels out all heaven and all earth. To get grounded in prayer is to show God humility, beloved. To show God that you're willing to sacrifice some of this earth's some of this world's comforts that you might have, you, you might not have all the comforts of, 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 of somebody else, but you got some comforts. Amen. You got something for which you you like to put your feet up too. Amen. But 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 when you show God in prayer that you're willing at least to sacrifice some of your own comfort for God's glory, God can work with you. The story is told of uh, of the three preachers talking about the best position to pray in. Amen. And while they were together there in the church office, the telephone repair man was there with him. Amen. The telephone repair man and the three preachers in the church office. The first preacher said kneeling. Kneeling is definitely the best way to pray. Amen. No, the second preacher said, I get the best results standing with my hands outstretched. Amen. When, when my hands see are outstretched to heaven, that's when God can really do the work God needs to do. No, said the third preacher, it's not your hands up. It's not your kneeling on your knees. The most powerful way to, to pray is in the prostrate position to lay down, to lay down on your chest and on your belly. Amen. And, and to lay face down so that, that God knows how, how humble you are in that praying. A lot prostrate before God. And then the repair man, the telephone repair man, could help himself no longer. He he shouted and, and chimed in. He said, hey, 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 reverends, listen. The best praying I ever did was hanging upside down from a from a telephone pole. See, that, that, that was the best position I ever had. Amen. Of course, his inspiration for all that great praying was that he didn't want to be grounded in that. Moment. The repairman didn't want to be grounded. Amen. He, 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 he wanted to stay in the air. A.B. Amen. When, when, when someone is praying for you, beloved, think secondly of this. When they're praying for you, as the word says, not for brute strength, but for inner strength. Don't you know sometimes you need inner strength to face what you need to face in this life? They are praying for you to walk into situations grounded. Somebody say grounded with a spiritually satisfying sensation that no matter what the challenge you're facing is, no matter how long your trial, your temptation, or your difficulty lasts, your inner strength will shine. Your inner strength will see you through. When your inner strength is tested, remember Proverbs 24 and 10. What does it say there? If thou faint in the day of adversity, then thy strength is small. I love that the emphasis there in Proverbs is on the if as though we can choose something else. We don't have to choose to be faint in the moment of adversity. We don't have to choose to just take adversity and let adversity beat us all upside the head. Amen. We can approach it with a faith that's going to be the strength that we need to get through it. But if you faint in the day of your adversity, your strength is small. When we're more grounded, we may know the battle is uphill at best, but we can and will rise to meet it. <laughs> thirdly, thirdly, we go on in the text to see it says, and I ask God, I ask God that with both feet planted firmly on love, both feet, you'll be able to take in with all followers of Jesus. Somebody say all followers. That means conservative followers and liberal followers and mainline followers and everybody who follows Jesus. 
Catholic followers and Christians who are Protestant followers, amen, all followers of Jesus, the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Reach out and experience the breath of Christ's love. Reach out and test its length. Plumb the depths. Rise to the heights. Live full lives, full in the fullness of God. Then we learn that God can do anything. This strong encouragement by Paul reminds us we are firmly planted until both feet are planted and planted on the ever expanding, ever more inclusive love of God. Love that extends beyond borders. Love that extends beyond gender. Love that extends beyond labels, citizen or refugee. Love in the noon time and love in the morning. Love in the nighttime and love in the midnight hour. Love beyond physical capability. <laughs> we need to be praying and to keep praying, beloved, for this kind of love that traverses barriers that the world would otherwise put in place. In our world, in our nation, this is the only kind of love that's going to make the difference we need it to make. Amen? Amen. It's the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love that changes the world for the better and, 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 and restores hope in, in the people of faith. And, and when hope happens, this is what we know. When hope happens, uh, repeat it after me, hope liberates. hope liberates. When hope happens, hope unleashes compassion. Unleashes compassion. When hope happens, hope encourages people, encourages motivates people. Helps people find new strength. Thank you so much. It is the most important part of love's big three. All three are great. And only love can be on top, we know. But faith, hope, and love, that triumvirate is together. Faith, hope, and love is together. And the greatest of these is what? Love. Is love. I close with the, the story of the guy that I mentioned at the beginning of the sermon. His name was Louis Zamperini. Amen. The part you know is the movie Unbroken. Uh-huh. And I, I just want you to know I'm not going to spoil the movie today, Rose. Amen. You see, Louis ran for the United States in the 1936 Olympics. He ran in Berlin in front of Hitler like, uh, like Jesse Owens did as well. Amen. And against fascism and, and the, the, the idea that there was a master race in place. And Hitler's contention that, 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 that he was going to take over the entire world. In spite of all of that, there were Americans there in the Olympics that showed the claims of master race didn't hold up for Hitler. Amen. And Louis was one of them. And after his 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 Olympic time, he joined the Army Air Corps. And in the Army Air Corps, his plane was shot down in 1943. Now, when your plane shot down and you only got one plane, maybe you ought to die right then. Amen. But listen to the next line. He survived against all odds. Somebody say against all odds, beloved. And those who haven't seen the movie yet, we're going to leave it at that because that's the part you can know just by, so you can learn all the things that he survived. Amen. The part that wasn't in the movie, somebody say the other part. The part that wasn't in the movie was Louis' severe depression after he got out of the army. The kind that almost destroyed his marriage. The kind that, 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 that had him on the edge and deep in his bottle. The kind that people, now we have a term for it. We call it post-traumatic stress syndrome. But Louis was, he wanted to tell us that, that back in the 50s, they didn't have a name for what the soldiers went through after they came home. Amen. But he was going through it. Amen. This man who had come home like someone resurrected from the very dead, his overwhelming anger and hurt against his captors. 
that too had to be healed. Amen. Can you imagine that your captors are ones that you would have to meet with after you get out of the prison camp? That happened with him. Amen. He he had anger against the former enemies of America. And then All right, man. his come to Jesus meeting happened. Then as a last resort, his wife suggested that he go down to the Billy Graham crusade. And then for him, for Louis Zamperini, that was the thing that turned him around. That was the thing that took him to his liquor cabinet and emptying every single bottle from it. And, and, and his wife didn't know how it was that he was going to handle things. She thought he was just going to go on yet another binge. But he poured all that liquor out. His life changed because he met Jesus. Come on, somebody. His life changed because he got to know Jesus. His life changed because Jesus became the strong influence in his life and he gave Jesus a chance to stay that way. Amen. Sometimes we only give Jesus a little chance. Amen. And Jesus deserves a big chance. Bigger than my arms can reach. Bigger than our, all our arms can reach together. Amen. And what happened with Louis Zamperini in the final analysis, beloved, Reminds me of that Christian hymn that's been sung for generations that says, what a wonderful change came into my life, has been wrought in my life since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which uh, I long for and sought since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy on my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart. If you give Jesus the chance, he'll ground you. If you give Jesus the chance, he'll gift you. If you give him the chance, he will gracefully get you up out of that rut you find yourself in and get you going again. That's his promise. That's his will. That's his way. He died so we all could have the chance at eternity. We thank him. We celebrate him. And we are glad to serve him. Jesus Christ, our Messiah, our Savior, and our Lord, let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the opportunity you give for all of us to become more grounded people, more grounded in our faith, more grounded in our belief, more grounded in our actions, our works of service unto you. And we ask, oh God, that this time together, this time and annual meeting would simply open up new opportunities for new people to gain their footing and their grounding in you, to, 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 to have the folk that have been serving you from, from childhood and continue to, the folk who serve you day by day, oh God, to be inspired to continue staying grounded in you. We must stay grounded in you, for without being grounded with you, oh God, we will lose hope. Without staying grounded in you and with you, the world will knock us all around. It'll whisk us away like a fall leaf from a tree. Lord, this day, help us to seek and desire more grounding, gracious grounding, gratefully. These things we ask in Jesus' name and, and for his sake and I heard the church say amen, 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 and amen. This morning, beloved.